quench quake. Too short to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes, and Boats Reviews. I've got one from Brewdog tonight. It's called Quench Quake. Um, it's a sour beer. I've never tried a sour beer from uh, from Brewdog, so this is intriguing me. It's a 4.6 um, sour beer, which they think is uh, sessionable. Let's get it open. Let's see what it tastes like. Of course, Brewdog need no introduction. They are the um, craft beer innovators from Scotland. And they have uh, basically kick-started the revolution on craft beer, as you know, if you drink craft beer. If you don't, then basically this is the answer to all the macro brewers out there. Um, they introduced their Punk IPA, which was groundbreaking in the UK. And the rest is history. They have so many beers, I can't even name all of them. They really do brew loads of stuff. This one I saw on a supermarket shelf and uh, I was intrigued by it because I do like sour beers and uh, I want to get this down my neck. It's, as I say, it's 4.6, it's a 330ml bottle. It's got a lot of gump from the back, which I'll read in a minute, but I just want to sniff this and see what's going on. Oh, that smells lovely. There's some grapefruit and some sweet, some sweet sourness, if you can imagine that. And it says to um, drink this cold as well. So it's been outside, it's mid January, it's freezing cold out there. So yeah, I haven't put this in the fridge. This has got colder quicker outside than it would do in the fridge. Let's get it in the glass and see what's going on. So they've called it a sour, and um, I would have expected it to be cloudy, like a Berliner Weiss, but it's slightly cloudy, mild carbonation on it, one finger head. Oh my god, the aroma just smells amazing. fruit in there it reminds me of um, what was the sweet it was red and yellow and it had the sherbet in the middle so you had that sweetness but when you got into inside it was sour this is what it's reminding me of but it smells lovely let me read out the gum from the back I should really taste it shouldn't I but I just want to read this out description uh, buckle up for the juice bomb of a sour beer. Buckle up, bu uh, buckle up for this juice bomb of a sour beer. The first tremor of, tar of tartness hits, then hold tight for a citrus blast of seismic proportions. Tectonic plates of lemon, tangerine, tangerine, that's what I'm getting in there, grapefruit and tart apple. Mmm. Agitate the pie crust and biscuit backbone. It smells amazing. I just want to drink this now because after reading that, I want to see if that is correct. Let's give it a go. Wow. Right, so it's sour. <laughs> there's bitter apple but not in, not like cider and there's fruit yeah you do get the fruit but I keep being reminded of that sherbet sweetness with the sour kick at the end of it it's, it's really intriguing me
the mouthfeel, you can almost, without tasting it, you can almost taste the sourness just from the mouthfeel. That's really weird. It's like a, if you could imagine a white wine, it's like that, it's got that acidity, or a, not a white wine, a, a, more like a cider, more like a West Country homegrown cider. It's like that, but it's not cider. Don't think this is a cider. It's really, it's really complex. And that maltiness at the end, you, you do get that maltiness. It's, this is amazing. If you can imagine apple and sherbet, now, I, you know, if you're watching from abroad, I'm not sure, <coughs> I'm not sure whether you got sherbet over there, but when we were kids, uh, we'd get this, it was like a tube, and it had a stick of licorice in it, and like a tube of sherbet, and you'd stick the, you'd lick the licorice, stick the, um, stick the licorice into the sherbet, and you lick, lick that, um, and it is, it's what it's reminding me of, but there's apple overtones there, I am getting the apple, that is there, but it's not like cider, it's like, it's difficult to describe, it's like apple and sherbet, that's what I'm getting from it. It does leave a, it has got a tart finish to it, but when that goes down, you get these biscuity malts coming back up. It reminds me of um, a little bit like Belgian Hoosa. If you've ever had um, Hoosa before, I remember going over to um, a place near it was in Flanders, it was in the Flemish part and I remember a friend took me to a pub and they had Hoosa on draft and he says, oh you have to try this this is reminding me a bit of that it's got that tartness but when you get the back end the sweetness comes into it I'm really liking this It's, it's really weird. You get the the bitterness. No, not bitterness. It's, it is tart. It's like bitter sherbet and apple juice. And you swallow that. And then as you swallow that, a rush of malt, biscuit malt, comes back up at you. And it's lovely. And it does remind me of Hooza. A Hooza that I tasted in... Um, I'm trying to think of the name of the place. Right, the place is called Steen or Kurzil, which is in Belgium somewhere. Who knows where? But I tasted the Hooza there for the first time, and it was like this. It reminds me of this, and it's bringing a smile to my face, and I'm really liking this. I just took this down to the missus and uh, got her to try it. She absolutely loved it. Even my stepdaughter, who doesn't drink beer, she hates beer. She said, oh, it's, it just smells like beer. I said, taste it. She actually finished it off and said that was lovely. She really enjoyed that. And I've just noticed as well, the color of the label. It's the color of rhubarb and custard, you know, them sweets you used to get with a sherbet. It reminds me of that, the sweet and the sour. It's lovely, really nice. Well done, brew dog. This may not be for everyone. There's sourness, and there's maltiness, and there's fruit. It's really good. What would I give it? Well, this, I think, is a 10 out of 10 for me. And the reason I'm gonna give it a 10 is because um, it's 
really flavoursome. It's got the bitterness, it's got sourness, it's got the sweetness from the malts, and it's got fruit. And they've really done a good job here. I don't know what they've put in it, but it just works. And, you know, people, you know, certain people on YouTube I know have got problems with Brewdog and, you know, oh, they've lost their way and all that. But this stuff is fantastic. This is great. This stuff Elvis and Elvis juice are two really good beers that Brewdog have produced and they're both 10 out of 10 for me. I think this is fantastic. It is nothing like you will ever taste if, you've, if you're a beer drinker. You might hate it. Some people might like it. I love it. I think it's, and again, it's repeating on me and I'm getting hops in that as well. <laughs> it's just, it's just got everything. It is really great. 10 out of 10, recommended. You can get this in Asda. I think it's 189 a bottle or something on it. Get it. You'll love it. Or you'll hate it. It's not one of them where you think, oh yeah, it's okay. It's just got everything for me. It's full of flavour there. It's bursting with flavour. Brilliant. Well done, Brewdog. Well done, Brewdog. 10 out of 10. And remember, beer is working class champagne. <laughs>